Hello everyone and welcome to my vlog show African Girl Answers, the one place for all African girls under 35. And yes, that includes you who's trying to speak with a fake accent. That's okay, there's no problem. You are welcome to my show. My name is Sandra Fondufe, the age is silent. I am your host and today I will teach you 10 simple tips that you can use in order to speak clearly. African Girl Answers. Super! Last season, or when I started this show in 2014, I made an episode about the rapping syndrome gone wrong. Pretty much Africans that were trying to speak like foreigners in order to, you know, fit in or something. And I ended up realizing that, you know, most of us do that because we want to belong. We want to, you know, feel like we're being understood. And that's why I said, you know, I, I think the African accent is really beautiful. It's very sexy. It's very unique. And the idea is to learn to speak clearer. Learn to speak to be understood. That's all you have to do and you can speak with whatever accent it is. Every accent is beautiful. I'm not trying to put the American accent down or the European accent, no, it's all great. So long as the South African accent is equally beautiful, the Nigerian accent is beautiful, Cameroonian accent is great, the Ghanaian accent is perfect, everybody can live, everybody can survive. So why don't we try to stay who we are while just learning and focusing on speaking clearer with these few tips, I promise you, in the next 10 minutes, you will be surprised at how clear you will sound. Number one, take a breath when you speak and then talk. It will be much, much clearer than if you just, well, you know, that's how I speak on a good day. <laughs> Don't mind this thing I'm saying. Number two, stretch your tongue. The tongue is a muscle just like any other muscle in the body and it has to be exercised. Sometimes our tongues can be tense, our face can be tense, our mouths and lips can be tense. And I learned this from, a, from an acting class called Voice and Movement, where I learned that, you know, the tenseness in your face can actually affect the way you speak. It's the craziest thing ever, but it's actually really true. Uh, something you can do very, very easily is kind of like <clears throat> tip your tongue out, move it to the left, to the right, and stretch it all around. And when you speak, you will sound much clearer. <clears throat> I'm gonna do it for you, it's very embarrassing, and I learned this from another acting class, but I'm gonna do it for you only because I love you guys and you guys are that special. African girl, what do you do? Fondue gets things to tell you. So grab your rubber and get your shoe and get to the nearest seven near you. Sometimes you can you can even try doing it speaking. It actually helps a lot. So, I must look really dumb. I forgive you. You can laugh. It's actually funny. But um, I actually hear myself sounding much better right now. So it's it's kind of that thing that you can do to um, <clears throat> improve on the way you speak. The third thing that you can do that is very, very simple are, are, are called tongue twisters. Tongue twisters are simply words that you can say over and over in different ways that kind of test your tongue. Good ones are those by Faulkner. And there's this good one that we always did when I was a child, or I would teach you right now. You're pretty much saying red lorry, yellow lorry. Red lorry, yellow lorry. When you start saying it fast, it's very, very hard to keep it up. But doing that often, it actually excites your tongue and it's very good for you. I'm going to try it, and when I mess up, I'll give a little pause for you to try it, okay? <laughs> okay, let's go. <clears throat> red lorry, yellow lorry. 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 Now it's your turn. Try it. I hope you did not mess up like I did. <clears throat> but practicing this every now and then really, really helps the way you speak. The next one on my list is number four, enunciate your words. When you speak, speak to be understood. Speak so that the person listening to you can hear what you're trying to say. So if you notice, in this particular number, I am speaking in a particular way because I want you to understand everything 
that I am saying. I'm actually taking my time to say the word. I'm opening my mouth when I speak, but I'm not going like this. That's crazy. Just open it enough, but don't go like overboard, okay? The next one, number five, is something from an acting class I learned as well. It's called cold reading. It's actually an, act, an acting thing that we do to get better at reading for auditions. But I don't see why you can't use that in real life. The more you read um, from documents, the better you get at speaking and the better you get at reading from documents from meetings. Mind you, that what I'm telling you right now is not just about, you know, speaking clearly in real life. But what about pitching meetings, you know, pitching to your boss, this great idea you have presenting to your board of directors in your company. You can use it in so many ways. So if you have a big meeting, you can actually step to the side and do a few of these things. And when you come back, you will sound much, much clearer and you can impress your boss and get the contract that you have always wanted. Now with co-reading, uh, you want to read from a document. And for instance, I'm co-reading right now. Uh, it's a good idea to speak mostly about topics you know about. I just read that from there. And then let's say I could do this and look at the camera without it seeming so much like I'm reading from somewhere, it's a good idea, you know, to read from documents, whatever I'm saying. Something else you can do is kind of record yourself when you speak. I'm not saying when you're having, not that kind of recording, no Kim Kardashian here, no. Just record yourself when you speak because when you hear yourself, sometimes you can think your voice was all sexy and it's like squeaky like some kind of chicken or something. So you want to check it. And then also you can record yourself while you're talking with a video camera. The reason why I say that is Sometimes, you know, we have facial expressions. We have gimmicks that we've been doing for so many years. Maybe our eye twitches when we talk or our face does something, and we don't even know. And you end up looking like this bizarre monkey, you know, something that you thought looked like this. Looks like this. So, yeah, record yourself. It's a good idea. Number seven, read a lot. My grandfather used to tell me, read, read, read. And he was right. Reading has a lot to do with the way you speak. The more you read, the more expanded your vocabulary becomes. And you can actually sound intelligent in a conversation. It makes you speak clearer. It makes you, you know, sound educated. It makes you know exactly what you're talking about in conversations. And then what about the fact that it gives you a broad variety of topics to discuss about? Maybe you have some idea of physics, you know, a little bit about biology, you know, a little bit about chemistry, a little bit about math. So when you sit in a conversation that does not concern you, you're not like completely lost. At least you have an idea of what is going on. So that's what reading a lot really does for you. And I love it. <clears throat> Something else. I said that reading gives you vocabulary, right? Always try to throw in a word every now and then when you're speaking. Sometimes it makes you sound a little more mysterious. And it teaches the crowd that you're talking to a new word. I try to learn a new word every single day. I have not yet learned a word as of now because I was up since morning shooting. But on a good day, I try to learn a word a day. And even if it means in another language. So... You know, it's a good idea once more to speak, you know, using uh, vocabulary. But please do not use too many big words in one sentence. You end up sounding like a ridiculous fool, like the Nigerian senator. What's his name? Patrick or book or something, something. Take a look at how he talks. This is because all the flashpoints of war that has snowballed and transmogrified into bringing about a calamitous end for Nigeria. No, nah, nah, Mr. Patrick, you tried it. <laughs> Number eight, pronounce all your words correctly. You have no idea how much one wrong pronunciation can completely change the meaning of a sentence. A big one here is words that have the, that's a TH sound. It's very, very hard to pronounce it wrong. So people would say, instead of saying think, they would say think. Instead of saying a word like uh, thin, they will say tin. Don't forget that thin and tin have two completely different meanings. You're very tin. Huh? What's that? Thank. Tank. Thank. Thank you. Tank. The military tank. Those are two different things. So always try to pronounce those words. <clears throat> always try to pronounce your consonants. The S, the T's, the, the P's, the, the C's, all those... Um, Consonant sounds, but don't pronounce it too much or else you end up sounding like a snake. Like a fly. Nah, that's not good. Just pronounce it enough. Pronounce it to be heard. So when you're saying a word like, um, I danced, don't say I dance. I dance. I danced. I dance. I danced. Do you hear the difference? I danced. You can hear that I said D at the end. I dance. 
So some of us are very lazy when we talk. You never really hear the end of what we're saying. I'm lazy when I talk because I speak really fast. I'm very impatient. I'm actually not lazy. I'm more of impatient. I just want to like talk and be out of there. But I'm learning every day, and so should you. Number nine, know what you want to say. It's very important because the more versed you are with a topic, the more comfortable you sound when you're speaking about it. And people can tell body language is everything. So if you don't know that much about a topic, in order to speak clearer, a good tip is to kind of like listen more and do less talking. That way you don't start being confused and like being choppy when you talk. Your thoughts should kind of flow from one point to another and not be choppy. So another tip I would give you in this same topic is try your best to speak more about things you know. And when you're not really sure, don't be ashamed to say, I'm not sure. Oh, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with that. Number 10, in the same family, kindly reduce the errs or the uh or the mmms in your sentences. It kind of takes away the meaning of what you're trying to say. Okay, look at this. Hey, my name is Sandra. I'm from Cameroon. I'm wearing a beautiful African dress. Well, it's actually a regular black dress. And my mother gave this to me. I think they're very beautiful. Check this out. Uh, my name is uh, Sandra. I'm from um, Cameroon. And my mother gave me this necklace. I'm not really sure, but um, I'm going to sleep. I'm tired. What? Don't talk when you're not sure. There are other things that kind of fall in this topic. They're not really things that you can kind of, I mean, they don't really make you sound clearer, but they're in the same family. And I'm going to tell you a few of them that you can kind of cut out. And this is especially in a public gathering where you're people with that, where, where you're people that you're not really close to. In a business meeting, you know, when you're having coffee with a friend or something, unless you're really close to them, these little few tips can really help you out. One of them is that in the African context, when you meet people that are older than you, don't say, hey, peeps, what's up? Hey, guy. No. Mrs., madam, mommy, daddy, uncle, auntie, whatever you prefer, okay? You know how Africans are. Don't, don't do that. They don't really like it. Well, we don't really like it. Just that I don't care, but you know. In the same light, it's a good idea to be very respectful when you talk. I mean, don't forget that the points I'm giving you can also be used for a business meeting, uh, you know, a gathering. You know, you can't be cursing everywhere you go. I curse a lot on my show, because it's my show. It's my brothers, because they're my brothers. We're my best friends and my friends, because they are my friends. But I'm not going to be cursing in some random business meeting or, you know, in a, in a gathering where I'm not really familiar with everyone. So it's kind of important in that light of speaking clearer. All that, bitch please, bitch this, bitch that, nigga this, nigga that, nigga what, nigga what, da, 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 all that stuff, all that, um, the fuck, what the fuck, no, no, no. You can't do that unless you're in a familiar place with people who think that's okay. In the same note, I'm going to talk about courtesy, saying please, thank you, and excuse me. All of you with your really rude, horrible, terrible village attitudes need to stop that stuff, okay? Say please, thank you, excuse me. It's cheap, it's free, it doesn't cost money. That's all for today, ladies. Thank you very much for spending time with me today. I hope you learned something, and I hope that you can use some of these tools to apply in your everyday life and speak clearer. My name is Sandra Fondufe. I'm your host. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It's Sandra Fondufe with an H. The H is silent. I love you all. Don't forget to leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Tell me how you feel. Tell me if there's something you would like to hear about next time or in the bottom of this video. And one more thing, don't forget to subscribe. I love you. Suba. Hello. Ça va?